Hello guys and welcome to iPhone Smart. Trying out a new software, OBS, uh, to also get my face in here. It's not a good hair day, but uh, I hope it helps. Um, I just want to go do a quick preview of tomorrow. So uh, try and get through the uh, card as quick as possible. And I'll just start off with the first. I've done some notes last night already. And in the first, yeah, Dolceta, Oriental Bouquet, Betula, um, those three is very close together for me, I have to say. On the probability stats, we can't read much into it because there's only been six previous races that we've done a Gravel 1300. Note that the first ten races is all on Gravel turf and the last two will be on poly. So uh, just note that for your filters at the bottom here, if you want to just use turf for the beginning um, and you don't look at the actual poly ones then and there's your bomb roll uh, there's your bat adjusted time speed rating median speed exact distance median speed and then also your collateral if the horses is actually run before against each other and the collateral form in detail is also at the bottom here when you can see which horses has actually run against each other before and uh, the most recent is right at the bottom here and here we can see the exotics our exotic pick for uh, the pa and the bipod is exotic pick one also exotic pick two for pa and bipod you can see it's uh, massively full because it's massively full big fields and at the bottom here you'll also see uh, alternative bipod and pas that doesn't work so well when we actually have 12 races uh, on the day and then uh, for the pick six jackpot exp3 can be added as well as exp4 it just depends on your appetite for risk and then even exp5 if uh, if we still don't have uh, it depends on your appetite for risk some guys just do exp1 others do all the way to exp5 um yes also the race by race comments if you click on here then you'll see there's quite a few notes made on here already and you guys can make your own notes as the day goes by as well and there's some trainer only notes some jockey only notes and also some horse notes for horses that we following and because it's July day there's quite a lot Step to Lake, Sweet Pepper, Miss Cool, Lady Serena, Gobsmack, Sergey, Seamaster, Miss Daisy, After the Rain, Son of Raj, Gimme the Lightning, Lady Regent, Gladiatorian, Platinum Sky, Dolcetta, Melesh, Bosne, Majestic Touch and Winchester Mansion um, that's quite a mouthful um, the most recent ones is obviously Found at the bottom here when I did the 10th of June Winchester Mansions went extremely went against, well against a strong field Rockpool was back to 8 to 10 favorite but one unextended returning from a rest and on that can go much further as well so uh, just some notes when you guys get um, to those specific races that might or may not help like in the first year we've got Dolcecha very decent run 20 April 2013 behind two smart swords both tried hard to win on that made most progress over the final hundred so it can do 1200 as well i really have a preference to just put it here on race so that i can see the trainer and the jockey and the horse notes on a race by race basis like i just added this grand van Nikak's birthday was today because that seems to be also something of late that you have to follow even the owner's birthdays and the trainer's birthdays as well and then on the track some uh some daily study basics here uh, have a real good look at the red horses in KZN Joker red ones the one with the little Joker is the owner and trainer ones and also the Raiders obviously tomorrow we'll have lots of Raiders um, take into consideration the amount of merit rating it's dropped now that we've fixed now that the more red the horse the more merit rating it's dropped so if it's very red it's dropped a lot of merit rating or hidden a lot of merit rating um, uh, start every race with what they're trying to do especially when there's a stable mates in in the race um, odds on favorite doesn't really w um, work well at gravel and some other notes that you can make notes for yourself as well you just quite simply click on the plus button here and uh, you make your own note for the horse or the trainer or the jockey or the race um, and you can choose to just do it on the day I normally keep it there for like on a horse that it pops up next time and you can even add the video if you wanted a video preview for yourself next time when that horse runs again 
you'll get the notification on here also if you're on the VIP play just make sure on your profile that you actually do have your notifications set um, and if you don't then uh, you obviously don't want to see notifications there's your notifications at the top here so on notifications you just put the tick on to say yes you want notifications and if you actually do want them the the uh, other part is also make sure that your browser that you're using whichever it is I prefer Chrome but whichever it is uh, just also make sure that you have notifications set up on Chrome as well um, I think it's going to be a bit slower by the looks of using this uh, this uh, OBS new software of mine so just bear with me I'll uh, try and get back into the horse racing immediately now but that's just a couple of things that uh, I I uh, like to, to just put out there so you guys know that's the kind of things that uh, you have to have set for your VIP play to to really give you a uh, a notification on the top here and if you don't want a notification you can quite simply just see that there will be a little number on there um, for all the ones you've missed individually so if you come back onto the site and you've missed 10 you'll have a number 10 there but if you're online the whole time and every time you go look at it then it refreshes and resets again and then you might just have one or two or whatever the case might might be um, but yeah like I was saying with load shedding and with this program on it uh, might be a bit of a gamble to to actually uh, try out our uh, first time little recording so uh, yeah it does, does, does take a bit does, it does, is a little bit slow anyway um, that's enough for now let's just I prefer bat because bat bomb roll is best average merit rating adjusted links behind I prefer bat because bat also calculates the actual adjusted time or the pace for that specific race as well so I like to keep my ones at the bottom here on, on bat figures. And then a couple of other things here. All your legends is at the top here. If you just hover over them, you'll find out what it means. Back from rest, back from rest with a very high strike rate, medium strike rate. Um, back from, from rest with a, uh, a, a, a cold strike rate. And then also being gelded, older horse, stable change, hot, um, jockey or trainer or combination. And obviously the... The joker one is the similarities between the owners, trainers, and uh, jockeys. That little red two means second run after a rest. If you see the red three, it's first run after a rest. That little one is, is it's coming back from a rest, being 60 days. And uh, then those little numbers you see there, number two is the amount of races that the trainers entered in. Keegan the Miller's ru running in 10 races as a, the jockey. And then that uh, the flame... Uh, next to the trainer is the the trainer is in good form the one next to the on the right hand side next to the jockey is the jockey is in good form and if you see one in the middle as well then it means the jockey and the trainer together as a combination is in good form um, these uh, other indicators the greener the better so any of these indicators the greener the better um, and then yeah obviously the draw yeah if the draw is also the greener the better when it gets dark then it means that uh, the draw is not uh, in your favor or we don't have stats for the specific draw uh, in this case it's the 1300 meters which uh, yeah is quite a sharp turn so uh, yeah if you look at Dolceta uh, for instance which is our top rated here why is it the top rated and not the top points rated we've got different ranking systems we've got the machine learning and, and uh, artificial intelligence on the left here where the brain is and then we also have the yellow stars which is the ranking average which is a complete ranking of all of these columns and then we also have just the total points only system where you just look at the total points and for those that actually does super rule percentages as well there's the super rule percentage ones and then we have the overall ranking percentage which is the overall ranking rank here and the exp percentage is the actual percentage next to it now you'll see Dolcetta here the one we had a note on uh, it did run over the gravel 1400 the previous run ran second uh, it wasn't yielding as well so the distance will be a problem tomorrow and uh, that's our top top rated year in in this race and uh, I also quite like Betula in this race year and Oriental Bouquet is a really nice roughie his last run was not any good 
but then if you look at his 84 days uh, bat figure of 292 that's actually really good so um so he's a bit of a bit of a rough year at, at, at that kind of a price for me unfortunately there's a lot of buffering now with this uh uh recording it seems on this uh, it's it's worse than it's actually when i just do it on the other one maybe that's because my face is in here um but be that as it may uh I'll, if it doesn't work then it doesn't work and then uh, we must go back to the one without my face actually uh so that's the first four that i have in mind on in this race here you see some hidden bat form here on Oriental Bouquet when he ran that 2.92 year, which is that is in lengths. So that was really good when Craig Zaki was taking the run. Then Craig Zaki went again 1400 and again 1400, and maybe those two 1400s was too far, and they're dropping it back to a little bit of a 1300. So your bat will be somewhere in the middle of the 17 and the two there, somewhere like an eight or a nine, which then does bring it very much into the equation as well. Um, considering that the Raider here, uh, Dolcetta, had an 8 as his best, and there's another 8 over the 1100 at Vol. Um, so, Oriental Bouquet is probably not out of it, and that little joker sign does mean that Mr. Dunkel Howells has a, a share in the horse, and therefore they can really decide when to strike, and what better time to strike than actually on July day, when he's only got three uh, races entered for the day. So, uh, that's my uh, pinch of salt, but Oriental Bouquet at 20 to 1 has a lovely 66.66 win place uh, because he's, he's actually done 2 out of 3. And maybe that last run, you can forgive him with Richard Furry on board when he was actually backed in from 5 into 3, but didn't perform. And now Sean Veal takes the run, and Sean Veal has a very nice 17% win and 41% place record with Duncan Howells. So that's something to consider. Funny, Richard Furry has jumped over to Del Ceta. That's something to look look at for. Um, and if you look at on the previous run, they both ran in this Devo 14 Gravel. Chase Majon um, was on board then. Now Richard Furry. Richard Furry has a 100% record um, to place with Robin Clarsen. Uh, all of this is taken into consideration when we actually do the ratings. Um, but that also means that Dolceta was only uh, half a length behind the winner with Chase Majan on board and Oriental Bouquet was 6.9 behind the winner. Uh, but in saying that, you can see that they expected a lot more from Oriental Bouquet because he was uh, backed into 3.3 where Dolceta was uh, at 7. And with the change to Richard Furry now, uh, Dolceta could again confirm that form. Or we could actually see that uh, that was just a bogus run with Richard Furry, and now Sean Bill um, justifies that 3.3 backing last time and comes and win. Well, the other part of it is that well, it was a 10 draw the last time, which is now down to a 6 draw, which is obviously a better draw. Um, so, yeah, he's a little bit of a roughie to consider, Oriental Bouquet and Dulceta, and then the other one I think is Betula. Um, those are my three main contenders here, and if you actually look at Petula and uh, and where was the other one? I thought that they also had the, the same race. Uh, let me just see at the bottom here on the collateral form uh, if we have horses that has run against one another recently. Yeah, so Dolceta and Oriental Bouquet on the 10th of June that we just discussed there. Um, also Secret Identity and Divine Moodlight ran in those same races and then you can compare the odds on those races as well and uh, and see what th the actual expectation was on that day versus today. Now here you see Secret Identity for instance, uh, he won that race from a very bad 14 draw when it was a 10 to 1 and uh, he's on the same uh, he's on the same weight uh, as the previous time 60 kilos and again 60 is again got a bad draw 13 birthday boy grand for nikar that's birthday is today uh we might just strike with secret identity as well uh did beat oriental bouquet by 6.9 lengths and uh yeah dolceta was uh, only a half length behind so that's probably another one you can throw into the mix uh as my top four is 
in agreement here with what the top four of IPS is. It's not normally the case. It's uh, actually very few times that it is the case. But uh, but those four I can agree with would be the, the main four. Uh, Dolceta, Oriental Bouquet, Secret Identity and Betula. Uh, Dolceta being a slight favorite for me now with the confirmed form against one another and Richard Furrier on board. Uh, the 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 question mark in the packet is the Oriental Bouquet that had that lots of support previous time and then didn't confirm it. And then you've got Harold Crawford here with Grant Van Nieke, birthday boy, that can also uh, definitely upset the apple cart here uh, since that did win the race by half a length the previous time. Um, so, yeah, all of those to be considered as uh, decent runners. Just moving on to the second year. I'll try to make it a bit quicker because I don't know if YouTube will actually accept such a, a large file. And uh, uh, if I am actually just streaming live, then that might might work better tomorrow. So we're just trying out a couple of things at the moment. Uh, moving on, if it does take so slow, then that's another problem why it takes so slow. So my, then my face is maybe not worthwhile to have in the recording. <laughs> I think, uh, if this is the case, or maybe I should get some other software that works better and is faster, or a faster computer for that matter. In the second race, um, the first thing that I notice here is again, Fani Bronkhorst. Now, Fani has a few notes here, especially when Melandi Tiart is the, uh, the owner, the doctor Melandi Tiart. But that 17 bat figure was clearly nowhere as good as the previous 4.84 which is uh, the best in the field uh, and main defender being the top rated. If if pure predator comes back to that 4.84 and that last run was just a bogus run, then he's a serious contender as well. And there's some signs. He's got Gavin Lorena on board. He's putting the blinkers on. So uh, those are my first two. Uh, on collateral form, I did look at Jerusalem, Jerusalem Rain and Outlaw King as well. So I think those four is pretty much the top four for me uh, in the race. Uh, Tony Peter uh, is in absolute scintillating form, so uh, always have to consider him. And that's what we just saw that HVJS in the previous race. So um, I, that horse that ran in the HVJS we can see that Pure Predator and Main Defender also ran together in that. And Pure Predator was actually backed in from 3 to 1 into 2 to 1 when uh, 4.5 links behind Main Defender. Uh, and today Main Defender is 2Ks worse off. So that brings it 2Ks uh, worse off over the 1300, brings it at least 2 lengths, 2.5 two lengths closer. Uh, and then on top of that, the blinkers as well, and the fact that there was a backing into favourite three to one into two to one, and some very nice uh, and some very nice runs here. Both uh, problems in both um, horses is they haven't run gravel yet, so that's something to consider for sure that they haven't run gravel yet. But uh, those are my first two. And then Jerusalem, Jerusalem Rain, trying to say that still, on the 29th of April, did run second in the Turfontaine Nursery. And 60Ks again, 60Ks, all 60Ks. So Jerusalem Rain with the 2.75 uh, did finish a length ahead of Pure Predator on that race. And for that, he also has to be in the mix, considered. And then we have uh, Outlaw King. Yeah, that is the Kenilworth horse with some very good form, first, first, and then the third and the second in Scottsville to consider. Uh, moving on to the third. Um, moving on to the third year. And, uh, yeah, so Barney Broncos and Gavin Lorena, only runner, red, uh, is definitely... Uh, going to have the intention to try, that's for sure. But uh, some things to consider is also the probability stats at the top here. Uh, I think I must just keep that on at top rated to finish first so we can get the percentage just for the, the one indicator on all, all of them. Unfortunately, the things are very, very slow. 
I hope it's just the internet that's slow and not this is the normal thing about using this software because uh, if that's the case then we can't we can't use it like that unfortunately okay in the third race then we have uh, well on the top here probability stats 25 percent is your best yeah I quite like the chances of Seamaster as well as Street Art um, although they're third rated and fifth rated and then Aragosta and Jimmy Don uh, must be in the reckoning as they are first and second rated here and uh, yeah and then the favorite one-way traffic which doesn't look so good on the bat figures but is the best on the exact distance median speed um, for Seamaster and second run after a rest as well bad draw 13 as well it is a few things that uh, to consider but um, yeah when I had a colleague when we went through the whole card yesterday as well we both came to the same conclusion that we actually quite like Seamaster and uh, it's a 2200 meters it doesn't seem to bother uh, anything really because you can see five times that it's won uh, and it's actually won its last two as well so at 14 to 1 he's won previously at uh, Gravel it is a very far 2200 so the draw doesn't really make such a big uh, difference and uh, I think Seamaster is in the run here as a is a runner and uh, the probability stats also confirms it to 25% year on exotic ranking, also 25% on exact distance median speed, also 25% on intent. Uh, so there's three 25%, all three of them going to street uh, to Seamaster. And then here yeah, we've got the very good Tony Peter stable with Calvin Abbott taking the ride simply because uh, Dennis Schwartz can't ride the 53 kilos and Calvin can. So I will definitely think that in my view, and that's why you see my fantasy picks there, is Street Art and Sea Master in this race. That's that little fantasy pick. Anyone can play fantasy. There's some cool prizes, and it's free to play. So um, if you don't, even if you don't have uh, registration, the registration is only nine dollars ninety nine a month in any case for horse racing. But if you don't choose to pay your two hundred rand a month for registration. Um, it doesn't mean you can't play fantasy because uh, you can still at the top you play fantasy without having access to our ratings and still win some cool prizes without having to pay the 200 rand monthly. But coming back to street art here, uh, you can see that the, the previous time it ran with a 62. Now there's a huge difference over the 2200 now with the 53 kilos on the back. I wouldn't be surprised if street art can get away and stay away because uh, he was back in, in the first, uh, only time he ran the 2000 daily news in Gravel as well and uh, on that day he got some some backing Calvin Habib did ride him on that day as well but being that 60 kilos it meant that Calvin Habib actually had 7 kilos of dead weight in his bag um, so he'll probably like the free riding free running uh, better with Calvin Habib on the 53 kilos in my humble opinion and then uh, Aragosta is definitely a runner to consider and so is Jimmy Don that was also entered in the main race and uh, at this stage we don't know if Jimmy Don's going to get in as a reserve or not but um, so you'll see Jimmy Don is in as a reserve in the main race but uh, it can't ru run on both sides so we'll have to just uh, check that at some stage whether that is going to change or not. Now um, Aragosta must be a serious con consideration as well and the reason for that is first of all Frenchy Christophe Soumignon you must take him seriously and he's uh, got a serious uh, Mike de Kock 50% wins and 50% places so uh, Mike de Kock also chooses to use him where Mike de Kock is one of the owners so that's all things that really is in the in 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 the advantage of Aragosta and then you'll see he's also got the pacifiers on today um, that's what that A to AC means and uh, so there's a lot of things for Aragosta that's going in Aragosta's favor um, I do like street art with that very low weight because of that 6.2 bat if you look at that 6.2 bat um, 42 if we call it Batman 
if you actually look at Batman over that, uh, then it's actually got a lovely advantage on, on the bat, and that's in lengths. So it's quite a big advantage on, the, on that last run, um, because it's now just taking the 53Ks on the back. So that's something that I'd definitely be considering when... Uh, when it's it's not a kind of race car where you can back many races just on the nose in my opinion so you're going to have to be street smart and uh, hedge your bets and have a couple like three or four horses in the races where you can't find the banker and so yeah that's always a risk versus reward question i, I guess for everyone but my main contenders as i said is uh, yeah i like street art personal fancy top rated Aragosta I like C Master as well because it can win at any course and at any distance and it seems to be special um, and Gareth on sales in really good form and then Jimmy Don if he's racing here or whether he's racing in the main race and then you have to consider a horse like uh, Union Square as well because anything that has Bat C top um, Bat C is your consistency bat over the last month and anything that's top in bat C is usually a runner. Um, if you see the purple line, the purple line simply means that's our line horse, the horse that all things considered should be in the quartet. That's the highest probability to be in the quartet is our line horse, and that's that purple um, purple line that you'll see over there. Um, but yeah, there's a lot into it. A lot of our members has been with us for a very long time. So that does make uh, make it much easier for them. But uh, the reason why I said Union Square is another little one that I've just stuck in. I, I might just change that because I prefer... Mike DeCock would probably want Christoph Sumilio rather than uh, than want Craig Zaki here. So I'm going to... I'm going to... Yeah, I'm in between uh, the two Mike DeCock runners. But let's go with Christoph Sumilio and stick with the IPS selections I mean that's why we paid the millions of rand to develop it to say uh, yeah Aragosto is probably one to consider in this race moving on to the fourth race and uh, yeah I'm uh, probably thinking it's uh, already taking too long of too much of your time but uh, sorry for that hopefully you can play it in a faster version um, so that it doesn't take up so much time but uh, I was also thinking of doing a live stream tomorrow during the race so that everyone can be interactive and talking and doing with everyone else, but hopefully the actual speed would not be such a problem, and uh, if that is the case, then we can get away with it, otherwise we might just uh, have a problem to actually do that. So yeah, as you can see, we are waiting in my opinion way too much to actually get through um, these different screens and that's all because of this new this new uh, software called OBS which we do need in this weather old brown sherry <laughs> let me just see if this is actually it's, it's almost uh, just the three races so far that we've got through and uh, I'm worried that it's actually going to battle so much with the, the the moving from one to the other. Okay, so here we are on race four. Now, as I've just said to you, one of the biggest things that I really like to consider is uh, Bat C. And uh, in this race, Bat C is actually a, the consistency curve that really pops up interestingly for me. And that's why C Master popped up as well with Gareth on sale in the previous, with Fight Song in this one. Um, Helengua is probably one of the better appies that's just now not an appie anymore. He just finished his uh, his 50th win, so he's not an appie anymore. And Fight Song is very decently poised in this race, uh, trying this distance for the very first time. But in saying that, look at his bat figure of 7.37 in comparison to... Uh, the second best, and I don't want to now float around because these things in real life on your own PC doesn't take so long, but now because I'm streaming it does take much longer. Okay, that actually went fast. So 14 lengths to Tababui, the other Gareth von Sale runner in this race. And Ilengua and the actual owner, I checked it up on uh, Racing Form on the website, they actually have 66% uh, 
which is a 33% win and a 66% place record together at, with the owners, Palmer and Palmer. So that's one thing to consider here for a fight song that uh, was quite interesting. And also that it's third run after a rest. Hilengwa is only runner for the day. Hilengwa in his uh, jockey bio, bio, biography or whatever you want to call it, stated that he'd one day want to win a race in the Durban July. Um, this is not the Durban July itself, but it is a race in the Durban July. And then the fact that on the bat C column, it's actually like 14 lengths better to the second best, which is the favorite runaway song here. So I definitely have a little bit of a nibble on runaway, on fight song, with uh, the blink is also now uh, taken off only Alamites. And then the other horse that I definitely think that should be considered here is uh, Future Pull. That is my second choice. And then the Terry Stablemate Red Maple is my third choice. And I'll show you that just now with Macaulay on board. Um, has actually run very well with uh, winning on the 2400 Turfontaine um, with Macaulay on board. And then the next time one with Kumalo on board and then ran second with Kumalo again. Now Kumalo has been dropped and Macaulay is back. So uh, that's also interesting that iPunt is actually getting with Red Maple as the top choice. And then the Stablemate, which is the favorite future pull, as the second rated. And then, uh, yeah, third rated Salvatore Mundi, fourth rated Good Counsel, and fifth rated Fight Song. But personally, I would also take a little bit of a nibble there in Fight Song, and I'll definitely not leave Fight Song out of my exotics. Uh, that's for sure, because of that uh, beautiful uh, bat C value. At the bottom here, if this is too much for you, you can quite simply just say top six, because more than 80% of the time, the top six horse actually wins the race. So one of the top six will win the race. So then it just makes it more manageable here on all these. And, and then when you want to start comparing, you can take them out by just simply clicking on the name, and you'll see that they actually disappear then on your graph as well so you'll so so if you're actually studying like that then that's an easy way to for those people that prefer to study with visually rather than looking at numbers i'm more a numbers guy being autistic but um the visualization also makes it easier for a lot of people uh in the fifth race i'm trying to go a little bit faster sorry for uh, the delays in actually moving between the screens it's not the same case when you're on the website it's simply the case of using this old brown sherry <laughs> software that we that we've got here for for my face to be displayed um and it wasn't that bad maybe it's because my face is that ugly it wasn't that bad without my face but yeah, Tababui, interesting runner as well because Mugurua and Gareth on sale has a really strong record. And they are the second on the bat 42 and the bat C there. So something to consider. In the fifth race, and I think a lot of people will probably tell you that um, it's not a good idea to, to bank a, a horse that's everyone's banker because I think Mysteriatics will probably start at like I wouldn't be surprised if it starts at 5 to 10. And the third Stormy Choice and the fourth Foreshore is both reserve runners. So it might actually even look better for Miss Geriatrics come start racing day when these two get scratched. Um, so yeah, I'm a very strong believer of Miss Geriatrics. And I know Miss Geriatrics hasn't done the 1400 meters and that's one of the major concerns for me. Um, but in saying that, he got his bat figures improved as he went from the 1160 Turfontaine into the 1200 Scottsville. Now, he hasn't even run the Gravel either, but he, he came and he won from a 12th draw very easily on his last run in yielding conditions. So, being yielding from 12 now to 14 tomorrow is already um, the yielding help that it shows that he could last that, and he did improve on his bat figure there. So, he's probably a decent horse for me as uh, considering to consider as a banker for the pick six if you wanted a banker for the pick six i would though also um consider no filter which also hasn't done the 1400 but has got the bat 42 and i'm a firm believer that our bat figures are the best if you actually look at bat 
Batman, we got lots of jokes about Batman hitting, Batman hitting again, like he just did on the very last race here at Fairview now with Zitz, with Stason as well, um, Batman does hit quite often, so uh, it's something to consider that if you don't bank him as geriatrics, then maybe no filter is is the the one to add into your, your mix. The other one that's a bit of a question mark for me is Distant Winter because it had a lot of support in its in its life, like even like a 4 to 10. Second, 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 first and first. And given the fact that it's coming from a rest, it could just be that much better now coming from the rest. So maybe the third one in my list, uh, in any case, will be to also add Distant Winter. In the sixth race, I hope this moves faster now through to the to the sixth race we're at least almost halfway through um, and in the sixth race now as soon as we can see it <laughs> okay oh, it's still a problem moving over the piece that's not really remarkable here that the highest is 20 percent and that does go to miss geriatric so it's probably not a horse that you can go get crazy on um, as as a winner um, their long sword was just scratched, so that's a cool idea. Um, and uh, okay, I'm not selecting that as a editor pick any anymore. In any case, yeah. So um, yeah, give me another chance. The actual favourite uh, does have a few things going for it, but it has been in need of another chance every time. I almost want to say because. It's uh, won the last two, but has uh, run second and third on its first two. But that being said, because it's a 1400 that had won and another 1400 that had won, the previous 1400 was at Gravel, I I would think that Give Me Another Chance is probably a, a decent horse here to, to, to consider. But I do like horses that has the consistency, like the Batsy uh, as well, in the, in the form of Sandringham Summit. Which interestingly enough is the horse, sorry about that barking there, which interestingly enough is also now the um, the horse, uh, I think that's a delivery, so I'll probably have to stop this or pause this or do something in, in this uh, just now, but um, is the bat sea runner, so for me, give me another chance, fire and, f uh, and, and flames. Sandringham Summit and maybe Hawkbull in, in, in this race. Um, I think I'll stop it here and then I'll do the next uh, bit from 7 to 12 in the next one. Yeah.